All right, hello everybody. I just wanted to have two quick updates. Um, one, uh, this week I got two great things out of four member Slucky. Uh, let me go first to the schematic. I actually went to this board first, but I want to show you the schematic instead first. So uh, if you look here, he took the time. I was chatting with him on the forums about he'd, he'd noticed some things I had wrong. And I was trying to sort him out, and he, I guess, just decided instead to be more awesome than he already is and spend some time building this out. Um, and so his... Uh, this is the layout. I've got he's got it linked inside the same thread I mentioned on EL34 World, and it looks great. So here it is. Uh, it's got the oscillator, the phase inverter for the oscillator that goes into the modulator and the preamp section of the vibrato channel, which then feeds itself up into one half of the phase inverter of the main circuit and the preamp of the EF86 side with a brilliant switch, and into that other half of the phase inverter, and they both will then go through the typical phase inversion uh, process uh, and split into each other's sides so that they will m blend those two together through those and then into the power tubes. A couple of things to note that I didn't really clarify before was that in the AC15 he had, the A and B points are different in a way in that the A point isn't even used here. And the B point connects both to here and to the grids uh, of the tubes. So the both both his plate and grids were just tied together the same power, but in this case, in the AC30, they're actually filtering a little bit before or for the A, but then they in, put the, through the inductor in a second filtering for the screen. So that's another subtle difference there. But um, also, uh, the, the other thing he did was kind of showed a layout if anybody wants to build it this way. I ended up buying a different size chassis, as you'll see in the next sequence of this video. But this is for a really big one. If, you've got the, if you can space all of the things this way, it'll be a lot better for overall tonality. I'm a little tight on space, so mine are going to be a bit more compressed, and I just left a small gap, a slightly larger gap for my output jacks uh, near the um, power output tube, so they weren't, weren't near the phase inversion and the, or the preamp side. So uh, there you have that part, and next part of the video is going to be showing me kind of fabbing and prepping the chassis. Thanks. Okay, everybody. So today I'm going to be trying to go through the first prep phase and planning and layout of a new Vox AC30/4. I've already got the intro video that you've probably seen. Um, I'm, I'm, it's a very small chassis, and I'm debating, I may end up having to try and do a, bit, a little bit bigger chassis at this, I don't know, but for right now, the idea would be, instead of my transformers being on this, I'm going to use this large piece of sheet metal and try and prop them up somehow in a way that puts them a little bit above the, the way things are working here. I don't know yet how well it's going to work. I have to be careful, like, for example, if I do it like this, those transformers will be in the way, and they're going to actually be down physically a little bit lower, about here like that, but they'll be in like that. And of course, this is just looking at general layout. This would be inside, so you wouldn't see this, but I'm just trying to physically set it there so I can see where it might fit. Um, and uh, I also will have to effectively reverse this, because once I, this is a mistake I've made before. I did it this way, and then I realized once I turn this upside down and put it inside the chassis, so effectively all of this is going to be re reversed. When I, what you want to do, this is kind of one of those trap for young players, as Dave from the EV blog says, you, you can mentally in your mind visual, visualize what you're doing here, but you should also, when you actually do your final spacing, if you want to kind of take all of this stuff off and actually turn the chassis upside down, you do it this way. Because if you don't, if you look um, uh, the way that's now set, I'm going to just kind of, this is preamp side, this is power, or this is the power side and rectifier. If I cut those that way and then I flip them over, then, well, effectively one of the problems I have is now my tubes are going to go to the front, so that's backwards too. So everything you have to do, you have to kind of flip in your head right. But uh, if you remember, this will be upside down, like this, so that it just kind of throws everything into a, uh, into a bad state, and you can really get it screwed up. So what you really want to do is you want to kind of think the fact that you're inverting it and flipping it. So really, the tubes would go here. in some kind of general sense like this. And I don't know if that's going to be visible when you rotate. Yeah, there you go. So, and then I'll have this here. And then this guy will go in like this somehow. And then I'll have all of my pots through here, volume and everything, and the power switches and everything. Um, so that's also part of what you have to be kind of careful with with your layout is figuring out exactly how that's going to go. But uh, I'm not going to focus too much on that part yet because I first want to try and understand just general spacing. Um, so... Uh, my, my idea here would be, um, again, as I said, I'll pull all this stuff out of the way. I'm going to try, um, Fend or Vox, when they did these, they actually had a second thing kind of like this that they put up here anyway. And then they would put their um, transformers here. 
and they would put their preamp tubes down here and their power amp tubes up here as well as the transformers. Uh, I want to try and get a pure, you know, I'm trying to decide the best layout for this, but I want to get a, a pure setup where I have something kind of like this, uh, where my preamp and power tubes will be, something like this. Sorry, that's a fire truck in your mic. So we'll have the, uh, we'll have this aligned, something kind of like that. And then, and then part of what I was trying to show is I'll try and show it a little bit in two different dimensions here. Whoops, sorry. One will be, if you realize, it's going to be somewhat like this, but it will be centered more in the middle, or if you kind of would, could picture it, you could see I'm going to effectively line it up like this. Ooh, let me drop it. Let me set this down. I'm going to put my transformers, and of course I'll have to, you have to put them out of phase, but I'll put them at opposite ends as well, and then I'm also going to put my choke somewhere on here as well. Then I will drill some holes below and run them down through. That gives me a lot more room on the chassis to just line up these and then all of my volume pots and whatnot, which are here, you know, so switches and volume pots and whatnot will go along this side. So, um, if you, again, like I said, to make this happen this way, well, effectively, you almost kind of need to go like this because you're inverting and flipping it. So really, um, the best way to realize also, if I want these along this back side, and this to be the back and this to be the front, I have to flip it around, but then put these guys inside here. So we're going to kind of mirror that in, in my head, like I was just saying. We're going to go back and try and think through that. This is all part of that logic of building a chassis that you have to be careful about. Um, so this guy, I want that this is the power tube section. This will go like that. But, my, but, again, this is part of the weirdness of this, is because of the way I'm setting this up, I actually want all of my pots to be on this side and all of my tubes to be on this side, if that makes sense now. So now I think, you know, I'm trying to actually think this out aloud with you all, but I think that that is correct. Uh, so effectively, you know, I'll have, I need to lay this out somewhat like this. Because power tubes are here. I want to flip this over, and this side becomes the back, and this is where I want my power tubes. And then all my pots and whatnot will go over here. So this would be the input section. Now, actually, on this amp, the input section is, is more here. And that's because the way this layout is, uh, is we have the tremolo stuff, uh, is all, all of these three right here, is all part of the tremolo. The tremolo input is here, but then all of that magic that happens in the tremolo circuit is off in this side. But that then bleeds in. This is also, this is the EF86 preamp, the normal preamp that has a bright switch that then comes into the phase inverter off to the power tubes. So, you know, this this uh, this layout already is going to be pretty packed with all of my knobs and dials and switches on the front side. Effectively, I have no power in here, and that's why I need to find a way to put all my power input and output transformers and choke on this. So I think if I follow this process, uh, I'll be able to pull it off, but uh, I'll, I'm going to go into a little bit more depth in, an, in an each video on this than I've done in the past where I go through and show each of my kind of thought processes so people hopefully can understand it and also people might give me some tips they've learned that say you know you're doing that wrong and here's why so but um, there you have it that's kind of the starting point as you can see I also have all of my here's all the capacitors uh, here's my tube socket covers here are a bunch of nuts and bolts locking washers I've got input jacks switches I've got my resistors and my knobs. It's all here and ready to go. So the only thing I'm missing is tubes, but I figure I'll wait on that because I can't put tubes in until I'm done. That's going to take me a good while. So this project's a big, heavy one, and I'm uh, looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I really want this to be a deep dive for everybody watching as well. So keep, uh, I'll keep you posted. Like I've said before, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, give me comments. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks.